hello friends welcome once again to the channel it simplified hope you're having good time with your family and friends in today's session on azure i'm here to talk about what are the different tiers that azure file provides and based on the tier that you choose how that translates into pricing so let's get started as you know that azure file is within the azure storage portfolio which is a platform as a service highly scalable and you can use it as a replacement for your file servers and now with integration of uh, azure file storage with uh, active directory domain services and azure active directory domain services it is getting very popular but uh, sometimes there's a confusion which tier to choose right what are the different options so we'll unlock that today so as I said that Azure File Storage falls under the storage services and in order to utilize, you need to create a storage account, which gives you two options. You can deploy this by using a standard storage account, or you can use this by using a premium storage account. So these are the two options available. And when we deploy this with standard, you have three tiers available. You can have hot, cool, and transactional optimized. For that, you need to have a storage account. And for premium, it has to be a premium storage account. And the tier is also known as premium in this case, right? Now, based on your application requirements and the scenario, you want to choose one over the other but anything under the storage account is using regular HDD in the backend. And for the premium, Microsoft is using SSD. So it's a solid state, you get better throughputs, low latency, and again, as I said that, based on your application requirement and the scenario that you're dealing with, you will choose one over the other, but uh, as the name suggests, premium, will give you better performance and better throughput and least latency. So if your application requires that, definitely you want to go with the premium option. Now, as I said that uh, storage account type needs to be deployed with standard or premium. These are the two options available and corresponding to that, there are these tiers which are available for you from Azure File Storage perspective. Now that's one thing. Other thing that also translates into the pricing is what redundancy you're going to choose. Now for standard, there are a couple of options available. You can pick LRS, GRS, there's zone redundant storage. So there are a couple of options and I'm gonna show you on the pricing side. Uh, but for the premium, we have only one option, which is locally redundant storage. And again, based on which option you choose, uh, that will increase or decrease the price. Uh, but these are the options available within the standard and the premium tier. So let me just go to the Azure portal and uh, show you what is the flow like. So in order to create a file storage, you need to have a storage account, but I just want to show you a couple of things here. Let me go and uh, pick a storage account and click on the add button. And you just need to fill the basic information like pick your subscription, deploy this in the resource group that you want to deploy give the name for the storage account pick your region and here is the performance tier you have a standard and you have a premium now take an example of the standard under the account kind i will recommend going forward use uh, general purpose version 2 because it has all the latest capabilities and then you can pick what kind of replication you want, right? You have a couple of options. So you can use locally, zone, geo redundant. So all these options are there for you. And then you can go and uh, just deploy that. Now for the premium storage or premium file share, you need to pick the premium performance tier. Or one thing which is very easily, uh, you can ignore this under the account kind, make sure from the dropdown, you'll pick a file storage for some reason in case you just go and deploy with general purpose version two, you won't get the access of creating a file storage. So make sure that you have picked file storage and you can see under the replication, I only have one option, which is locally redundant storage. 
So this is a way you're going to create your standard tier or premium tier, and then you'll be able to deploy. Now the question also arises, can you change uh, the, the tier once you have deployed those storage accounts? So for that, what I'm going to do is, I've already deployed two storage accounts. So I have one with standard and I have one premium storage account. So let me first go into the standard. You can see performance tier here. And if I scroll down, I have this file share option. I have a share with the name FS1. If I go and expand this, you can see I have this option of change tier. So if I can go and expand this, right now it is in a hot tier. I want to change it to cool or maybe transactional optimized. I can do that. But the premium is grayed out because for that, I need to have a storage account, which is a premium storage account in terms of performance and our storage account is a standard. So you can change the tier, what are the options available within the same storage account, but you cannot change from standard to premium at the storage account level. So in case I want to change it to maybe cool tier, I can go and apply. And you can see that uh, that has successfully updated uh, the tier for me. And uh, now I'm using a cool tier for this, right? So that's uh, something to keep in mind. Now it has changed to cool tier. Now let's go to the premium storage account and I'm going to expand this and you can see the tier is performance based, right? And if I scroll down from the left side, I have this file share option. If I go and expand this, one thing to point out that in this, you are charged for whatever capacity you have provisioned. So in this case, if, I'm use, if I have provisioned 100 gig of capacity, even if I'm using Say for example, a gig of data, I'll be charged for the full capacity here, something to keep in mind, which is not the case on the standard. So in this case, I'm using a only 1.25 uh, KB, but I'll be charged for the full 100 gig. So something to keep in mind from the premium performance tier, right? And if I want to change size and performance, you will see I don't have that option of choosing between hot, cool, or transactional optimized, because as I said, the performance of my storage account is premium. I can only change that within the same storage account, right? But uh, you can definitely change uh, the provision capacity. I think it has to be minimum 100 gigs. So say, for example, if I want to change it to 99, you can see the quota must be between 100 gig, right? And this, uh, this number. Uh, so minimum, it has to be 100 gigs. So you'll be charged at least for 100 gig, regardless of how much data it is there, right? So this is how you're going to deploy this. So let's go to the pricing calculator in case you're trying to price this scenario. So I'm going to go under the storage account and expand the view button. First option is to choose what region you want to deploy. And in the type, you're going to use a file storage. And here the different performance tier which I've explained for you, right? Storage account type, I'll always use general purpose version two, but for example, let's say premium tier and say for one terabyte, I'm paying 176 gig and there is no cost for metadata. And then there is also no transactional cost, which is there in any of the other three tier that I pick. So if I pick say transactional optimized, you see the price goes down. Uh, in this also, there's no metadata but there is a transactional cost associated. So for metadata, there's no cost for premium transactional optimized. But if I pick and change it to hot tier, the price goes down, but uh, there is a cost for the metadata at rest and also the transactional cost. And there's also obviously going to be cost for the cool tier, but it has the least uh, storage cost, but there's a cost for metadata and transactional cost. And something to also point out that you also have snapshot cost. Now, Azure files integrate with Azure backup. So if you want to protect it, you can do, you can either price it out from here, or you can go under the Azure backup and pick Azure file storage specifically, but uh, you can definitely use Azure backup services, which is another platform as a service to protect your Azure file share. So this gives you an idea about uh, what are the different tiers available for Azure file share, how to provision it, and uh, how they are priced from the pricing calculator. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.